things, but what about your relationship with God when you come before him? Your money don't matter anymore. Your house don't matter anymore. Your degree don't matter anymore. Your, when you come before God, your degree don't matter. God is not looking for a wise man. The Bible says you have to become a fool before you become wise. The Bible says you have to become a fool before you become wise. Why? Because like a child, you need to learn about the love of God. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is not promised. Who promised you that you'll see tomorrow? Who promised you that you'll see next week? You see, my friends, if in your heart you're not 100% sure that you're going to enter the kingdom of God, I will tell you to repent quickly. If you know that if, you, if God came down now and you wouldn't enter the kingdom of God, I would say that's a very scary situation to be in. But I'm here to stretch out the hand of God and to tell you that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. Hallelujah. How long of us as human beings go on this earth? 60, 70 years if you're lucky. Maybe 80. So what are you living for? You need to live for God. As a phone that's disconnected from charge is due to lose battery. We've been disconnected from God. We're due to see death. But there's everlasting life in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. By his death, burial and resurrection. Through Jesus Christ's resurrection, he gave us hope that there's life after death. I'm here to remind you that there's life after death. Where will you spend your eternity? If you knew how long forever was, you'd stop impressing people and you'd start impressing God. If you knew how long eternity was, you'd stop living for people's opinions and you'd start living for the glory of God. Hallelujah. My friends, I'm not here to push anything on you. I'm here to tell you the message of love. The Bible says the greatest act of love is that a man lay down his life for his friend. Many of us wouldn't even lay down our life for our family members, but Jesus Christ laid down his life for me and you. Ask yourself, why do you hate God? What did God do to you? Why do you hate Jesus? What did Jesus do to you? But all the time you say Jesus' name as a curse word. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. But you wouldn't say your mother's name. You wouldn't say your father's name. You wouldn't say your uncle's name. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you the message of salvation, my friends. You can make a million pounds today and die tomorrow. That million pounds is no longer yours. You can buy a house today and die tomorrow. That house is no longer yours. But what is important before you leave this world is that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. God Almighty is calling you today. Stop chasing after these temporary things. Your car might break down one day. Your house, your house might grow old one day. My friends, we're chasing after the wrong thing. If you knew how long eternity was, you would stop living for people's opinions and you would start living for God. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life and there's no other way unto the kingdom of God but by Him. We're looking for ways to distract ourselves from the reality that life is temporary. We drink our pain away, we smoke our pain away, we hide our pain through depression and anxiety. But I'm here to tell anybody struggling with depression and anxiety that Jesus Christ is here to liberate you. Just call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. We're in a generation who can't be sober for more than five minutes. They even need to vape, they even need to smoke, they even need to drink. You see, that's why when the Bible says the truth shall set you free, it will set you free from your addiction. I was addicted. I was addicted to smoking weed. I was addicted to smoking weed. I was addicted to drinking lean, liquid heroin. But when Jesus Christ liberated me, when I was saved by the grace of God, I can now tell you, God bless you, about the love of God. Hallelujah. To come out here and preach the gospel, God has to really touch you. To come out here and do what I'm doing is only by the grace of God. Because many people reject us, many people mock us, many people laugh at us. But we come here for your lives. We want you to know the love of God. We don't want you to be separated from the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says very clearly that hypocrites will not inherit the kingdom of God. We have such high levels for our fellow human beings. But for ourselves, we don't live up to those levels. Hallelujah. God bless you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, hypocrites shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Liars shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Fornicators shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Lovers of men shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What does that mean for me and you? 
It means by the grace of God we can inherit the kingdom of eternity. The Bible says physical exercise profits little, but godliness blesses us in this life and the next. So many people are understood that go to the gym. They go to the gym because they've been traumatized. They go to the gym because they're trying to look for an outlet, but the outlet is Jesus. Hallelujah. Ask yourself, what are you living for? What are you living for? What's the purpose of your life? Because I'm here to tell you, the greatest purpose of this life is to reconciliate our relationship with God. Come back to the first love, Jesus Christ tells us. Hallelujah. Today is the day of salvation. I've come to Kensington today to remind you, my friends, that God is real and He's calling you today. I've come to Kensington today, my friends, to come and tell you that Jesus Christ is Lord and that He died for your sins and that He resurrected on the third day. There is an afterlife. There is a God. There is a judgment. But the Bible says when you put your trust in Jesus, He is the resurrection and the life. You pass from death to life. <laughs> Hallelujah. God so loved me and you that He made a sacrifice. Love requires sacrifice. You can't say that you love someone without committing to some type of sacrifice. It might be your time, it might be your energy, it might be your resources. The Bible says the greatest act of love is that a man laid down his life for his friend. Jesus Christ laid down his life for me. He laid down his life for you. He laid down his life for everybody. The love of God is found in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You see, what Jesus Christ done wasn't just for black people, or just for white people, or just for Asian people. What Jesus Christ done was for all mankind. Hallelujah. He done it for each and every person. My friend, I don't know what you're dealing with, but I'm here to tell you, put it on the shoulders of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and He will liberate you. I was dealing with many things. I was living in sin. I was making a lot of money illegally. I was involved in a lot of wickedness. But when the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ encountered, when I encountered His love and I accepted Him as my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my life changed. My life changed for the better. Your life today can change for the better. Your life today can change for the better. What are you living for? What's the purpose of your life? Your life is not to eat, sleep, drink and die. Your life is not to work from Monday to Friday to pay off your addiction Saturday and Sunday. That is not the meaning of your life. Your life is not just to waste your money on designer. Designer goes out of season. God does not lose season. The meaning of your life is to reconnect with the maker of life, God Almighty. And that's found in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You see, go home, ask yourself, what is the purpose of your life? You're not just here to work and die. You're not just here to work and die. You're not just here to do foolishness and die. God loves you. He has a place for you. Jesus Christ said, where he goes, he prepares a place for you. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know who you're trying to impress. But the one you need to impress is God. And that's by grace. Not by your actions, not by your good works, but by your faith. You see, us as human beings, we put off, we have one thing in common, we all have faith. You put your faith in a bus driver you never met to take you home. You put your faith in a cab driver you don't know to take you home. You put your faith in a plane pilot that you've never met to take you home or to your destination. You have faith that you're going to see your family members again. But why don't we put our faith in God? Why don't we put our faith in God? Why don't we put our faith in the Lord and Savior. Every religion tells you to be a good person. Jesus Christ said no one's good but God. But by the grace of God, you can be saved. Grace is unmerited favor. We've received the unmerited favor of God. Hallelujah. We've received the unmerited favor of God. I'm here to tell you, my friend, whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through, Jesus Christ loves you. And he's calling you today. Come and receive the gospel. Come and receive the good news. This is the best news of your life. That somebody loved you so much that they took on your penalty. That they took on your charge. That is the best news ever. Hallelujah. 
that somebody paid your penalty that you really deserve to pay. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The same way that you get paid monthly or weekly or your salary, you get paid for the work that you do. Our lawlessness against God, we will get paid for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ came into the world not to condemn the world, God bless you, but to save the world. Hallelujah. Save us from what exactly? Not only from the judgment and the wrath of God, but from ourselves. Look at the world today. There's wars and rumors of wars. You have one side of the world saying free Palestine. You have the other side of the world saying free Israel. You have one side of the world saying free Ukraine. You have another side of the world saying free Russia. This is what the Bible says in the end times. There will be wars and rumors of wars. That's why the world today is so divided. Because the Bible tells us that in the end times there will be division amongst men. The one who can bring unity, peace, love and joy is Jesus Christ. Put your trust in Jesus today. You see God is calling you today. The Bible says today if you hear my voice please do not turn away. Don't turn away from the love and the peace that you're looking for found in Jesus Christ. Don't turn away from the mercy of God found in Jesus Christ. Don't turn away. Don't die in lawlessness because Jesus Christ came and gave us righteousness. Believe in the gospel. The Bible says confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Every religion tells you just, I'm paraphrasing it, just be a good person, live good morals, have good principles and then you'll eventually make it but Jesus Christ says that no one is good but God but it's the mercy and the grace of God that allows us to be saved so I'm here to tell you about God's mercy I'm here to tell you about God's grace I'm here to tell you to repent of your sins and believe in the gospel the gospel means good news I'm here to tell you good news that if you put your trust in Jesus you have ever lasting life where is everlasting life to know God and to know his son Jesus Christ hallelujah where is everlasting life to have love joy peace and all the blessings of God that he's willing to give to you if you're only willing to receive it hallelujah the Bible says that the wages of sin is death but the free gift of God is everlasting life through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You see, God gave us a gift. That gift was everlasting life. I don't know whose people who you're living for, what opinions you're living for, but you need to live for God. Because God will liberate you from all your chains. God will liberate you from all your pain. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what you're struggling with. But I'm here to tell you, my friends, that Jesus Christ loves you. I'm here to tell you, my friends, that God has a purpose for your life. We don't just work Monday to Friday to pay off our addiction Saturday and Sunday. We don't just get drunk every other weekend because we have nothing else to live for. No. We need to reconciliate with God. Because once you encounter the true living God, you will have a meaning and a purpose to live. This is why our youth are so crazy. This is why when I was growing up, girls as young as 14, they're already on the streets. Men as young as 15, 16, they're already stabbing, they're already shooting. Why? I grew up in a generation where you was respected for shooting or stabbing someone. Where you was respected for going to prison. That's the generation that I'm from. Don't be deceived, I'm only 22. Hallelujah. That's the generation that I'm from. I come from a lifestyle of drug dealing and all of those things. Gun wars, knife crimes. Why? Because we lack good role models. But if everybody lived like Jesus Christ, if everybody lived like the Lord and Savior, we would have good role models. This is why you see some young children, they're always dressed in black. They're always depressed. They're always sad. They always have anxiety. They're always... Why? Because they don't know the love of God. 
and then we blame society, but really and truly we should blame ourselves. Because God, he changes a man from the inside out. But us as humankind, we like to see people from the outside. How they look, what they're dressed in, how they're wearing. Us as humans, we like to look at people from the outside. Hallelujah. We like to look at people from the outside. But if only you knew what was in the inside of that person's heart, maybe you wouldn't call them a friend anymore. Hallelujah. God so loved the world that he gave Jesus Christ so that you can have everlasting life. Hallelujah. I say it, I said it before, I'll say it again. You can make a million pounds today and die tomorrow, that million pounds is no longer yours. Listen to a man who used to make money, thousands of pounds illegally every single day until I encountered the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Money don't mean nothing. If the Bank of England closed down now, many people would commit suicide because they have nothing else to live for. If the Bank of England said that your money does not mean anything anymore, we don't have a currency, many people would commit suicide and it shows how shallow our life truly is. What we're really living for. Cars, money, houses, people's opinions. Seek the opinion of God. Seek the opinion of God. Because one day you'll come before the eyes of God and you'll be judged for the things that you've done. I come here with urgency. I come here with seriousness. And I tell you to repent. Repent of your sins and seek God whilst you still have the opportunity. The Bible says you can't drink from the cup of God and drink from the cup of devils. Too many people say that they believe in God, but they're really living in sin. Too many people say that they believe in God, but they're dancing with the devil on the weekends. Let me tell you something, my friends. Jesus Christ said that is a narrow path and very few people find it. It's a narrow path and very few people find it. Unfortunately, there'll be more people in hell than there will be in heaven. Why? Because many people don't want to listen. That's why the Bible says my people died due to a lack of knowledge. My people died due to a lack of knowledge. We think that we can go to church every Sunday and God's going to be happy with us. But Monday to Saturday, you're living in sin. Repent. Repent of your sins, believe in the gospel. And I know sometimes this message can come across harsh. But it comes from a place of love that we, need to, we really do need to change. That's why this world is so wicked. Because if everybody lived like Jesus, everybody would be living in peace. If everybody lived like Jesus, everybody would be living in peace. Hallelujah. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow's not promised. Next week's not promised. But today the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. 